Hope you enjoyed the live polling. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to to um, participate again. So don't uh, don't disconnect. <laughs> so our theme for tonight is really how do we build a just Long Island? And obviously, race racism believes that we can't even begin to do that unless we tackle a subject that nobody wants to talk about, which is race, and structural racism in particular uh, on Long Island. So we have some panelists, and I will invite them up in a little bit, but let me just begin with some, um, have to do some thank yous and uh, et cetera. Certainly I want to recognize that we have a co-host for tonight's forum, <coughs> The State of Black Long Island Equity Council that's convened by Teresa Saunders and we uh, and the Urban League of Long Island and we have with us tonight Rita Fernandez wave your hand Rita <laughs> so we're very grateful uh, for their for their So for those of you who don't know about Erase Racism, we are a regional civil rights organization. We're based here on Long Island. Our focus has always been to identify and address institutional and structural racism, particularly in the areas of housing and also public school education. And we do our work through research, policy analysis and advocacy, we educate the public, we try to activate the public around the policy priorities that we've identified. Uh, we do legislative advo advocacy as well as advocacy uh, uh, within the institutions. And what did I forget? We convene coalitions of individuals who wish to move forward uh, on a particular issue and when necessary, we take legal action. So I need to thank the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Shelter Rock, because without their financial support, we would not be able to hold these forums. And, yeah. and we've also had some additional support from the Roush Foundation uh, in support of our communications efforts. Several of you have mentioned that you've uh, actually seen us uh, in communications, and that would not have happened without the support from the Roush Foundation. They are also a major funder of our education equity initiative. And I'd like to thank staff at Erase Racism, because this would not have happened without them. You may have emailed or spoken to Kelly Abernethy, who is coordinating these forums. We have um, Shirley Sharonfont and Naya Berg, both full-time staffers, who have also jumped in to assist us. And our part-time staffers, uh, John Mulvey and Olivia Ildefonso, along with interns and a host of volunteers, have really made this possible. So please help me in thanking everyone. So this is the fifth of five forums that we have organized around this topic. Uh, we've, we've so far met in uh, Stony Brook, in Riverhead, in Hempstead, Melville, and now Hawpock. And we did this because we really felt we needed to have a region-wide community conversation. It didn't do any good for a race racism to be talking about this in our office. We really needed to be out in different parts of Long Island, hopefully bringing in a wide variety of people. And what we've seen from our live polling is that people are coming from different communities. Um, we've had at <coughs> each of the forums, we've had uh, different races, uh, and we've had different genders. Um, I didn't see this time around. Usually the women have been outnumbering the men at, yeah. the, at the same here. We had one forum where the men uh, were really representing. That was great. And um, 
We also had a pre-survey that about half of you um, participated in, which we appreciate. It helped us shape how we uh, shape the, our questions and how we think about what needs to happen moving forward. So I think a number of the issues that you raised ha will be addressed <coughs> in this forum, and if not, please keep keep posted because um, uh, we found that the what people raised in the pre-survey was really very helpful and very relevant. So let me begin with a few remarks that I have. I'd like to set the context. And this map of Long Island's public schools is one of those reality checks. If you haven't looked at the information yourself, what you can see is that the green and red are clustered in a few places. That's our black African American students and our Hispanic Latinx students. So our schools are in fact very racially segregated. And I'll get back to that a little more in a minute. So not only do we have a lot of schools, 125 school districts, but we have other fragmentation on Long Island. And again, this is a quick snapshot. Um, if we included the taxing authorities, we'd have a thousand, you know, uh, you know the, the fire district and the water district and you know, all those things. This fragmentation is important to keep in mind because that's one of the reasons why it's very hard to make change here on Long Island. Mm -hmm. You know, just think about the schools for a minute. If only the people that are in the schools get to decide that there's some change to the um, to the district lines or who gets to go to what school, you can see why nothing changes, right? And uh, the same thing in terms of other institutional problems, structural problems on Long Island, because of all of the fragmentation, change does not come easily. So this is a quick snapshot of the uh, looking at Nassau and Suffolk County demographics by population. Just to show you who's on Long Island. And then when we look at schools, we are more diverse than we used to be. We looked at 2004 end of school year 2004 and end of school year 2016 to see what kind of changes were happening. Um, we have a full report and full infographic online, but I just pulled out a couple of things for your information. So the number of students attending the majority minority districts that are intensely segregated, meaning uh, 90 to 100 percent non-white, the number of students tripled go attending those districts. And then when you look at the number of school districts, it more than, du more than doubled. We started out with five intensely segregated, and we ended up with 11. So obviously, a race racism believes, the reason why we've organized these forums focused on structural racism. We believe that this is a topic that has not been discussed uh, very much, and certainly not in region-wide public forums. We also believe that we're not going to build a just Long Island unless we begin to uh, intentionally and aggressively identify the, the ways in which structural racism is playing out in different sectors. And part of what you're going to learn from the uh, panel discussion today is it will give you some grounding in what we mean when we talk about this. And also, they'll have an opportunity to share with you some, some of the examples in their, in their remarks. So I'd like to ask the panelists to come forward, please.
And we're going to start with David Miklos. He's founder of the DNA Learning Center, the nation's first science center devoted to public genetics education. The center is an operating unit of the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, ranked number one worldwide for citation impact in, in molecular biology and genetics. 